Ancient Sardis boasts some pretty impressive ruins, telltale signs of powerful empires that controlled this rich city over the centuries. Some of the most prominent ruins are these remains of a temple to a goddess named Artemis that the Greeks built when they came through. It was one of the seven largest Greek temples in the world, more than double the size of the Athens Parthenon. Now one of the coolest things about ancient Sardis is not this temple to Artemis. It's what they call the Acropolis. And I want to head up to that little hill right there to take a look at it. Just behind the ruins of ancient Sardis is a high outcropping overlooking the whole region, the Acropolis of ancient Sardis. It was there in the year 547 BC that historians say the decisive showdown between the rich Croesus and Cyrus, king of the Persians, took place. All right. Well, I finally made it up to the top of that little hill, which you see behind me, those ruins I was just in. Now, on this side of me, what you have behind me on this side is the Acropolis of ancient Sardis. This was the site of King Croesus' last stand. In order to save his own skin, he and his soldiers retreated behind a fortified citadel on top of the Acropolis, hoping that the height advantage would give them the upper hand against the Persians down below. Cyrus, king of the Persians, offered a reward to any one of his soldiers who could find a way to the top of that mountain to defeat King Croesus and his army. One did just that. They saw a helmet fall from the top of the Acropolis all the way down to the ground. When one of Cyrus's Persian soldiers watched one of King Croesus' soldiers climb all the way down and get the helmet, he watched how he got back up. The way to the top and the point of attack had been discovered. The seemingly impregnable citadel was doomed. The Persians climbed to the top, slaughtered the Lydian army, and Sardis was easily taken by Cyrus. So the oracle's prediction came true. Croesus had been told the great empire would be destroyed, and it was his. But interestingly, his life was spared on the Acropolis that day by the Persians. Local legend says that Croesus rebuffed Cyrus's mercy and threw himself on his own funeral pyre, along with huge stashes of his own wealth. But before he was burned alive, Cyrus spared him again, and the two eventually became friends. Despite the fact that Croesus was demoted to a bean counter in Cyrus's kingdom, Sardis became the western anchor of the Persian Empire. But even Cyrus's kingdom wasn't invincible. It was only a matter of time, a couple of hundred years to be exact, before Alexander the Great blitzed through Asia Minor and basically wiped the Persians off the map. Now, when the Greeks came in after the Persians, they built what you see behind me. This pretty huge and amazing worship complex to the goddess Artemis. Now, Artemis was called Diana by the Romans who came in after the Greeks. Now, the Romans, as they so often did, did their little urban renewal program, added a pretty huge gymnasium and a bath complex, both of which I need right now. Sardis came under Roman control in 133 BC. And under the rule of Caesar Augustus, the Peace of Rome, or the Pax Romana, kept the city and the whole region generally peaceful. That meant for the ancient inhabitants of Sardis, massive city enhancements. And for us, that means bigger and better ruins. The big ticket item in Roman controlled Sardis was the gymnasium and the bath complex located not far from downtown Sardis. The ruins of the complex, which have been well preserved, show just how important luxury and recreation was for the Romans.